I'm big into the mental game. I think it's one of the most important aspects that's kind of overlooked. And especially by, we've gotten so much into, I mean, I, fantasy baseball, statistics, everything, you know, mental stuff doesn't matter. It's all about the stats and putting people in the right places. Mental game is, 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 I think often overlooked, like we've just mentioned a team and a clubhouse coming together, but you've been through some stuff and I know you've talked about it before. Um, and people have talked about the yips. I've dealt with the players with, with yips. I've had yips before, um, at least to, a, to some extent, not at the level of a professional player. Um, what was that like going through it and help me and help me understand how you conquered it because it's one of those things that that I, I I know you've talked about it, but I think a bigger audience should be able to hear it directly from you about how you how you went about conquering it, so that everybody knows they're not alone if they're struggling through something like that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the yips they suck. Period. Like that's I don't know how else to say it. They're just no fun, and um, you know, from dealing with it for a couple of years, you know, the, the short abbreviated you know, concept that I came out with is it's an overreaction to fear. Your body's overreaction to fear. And, uh, you know, instead of going into like flight or fight, you go into a freeze mode. And I think your body just tenses up to a point where you can't do a simple task. It's as simple as that. It's just an overreaction to fear. And, um, for me, what helped me the most was kind of redirecting that fear from, uh, away from, the, the freeze and more into like a fight category. And uh, once I was able to do that, become aggressive on the mound again, I was able to actually start competing and playing baseball again. You know, um, you know, I don't think it has anything to do with mental toughness. I don't think it has to do with uh, your like, you know, character build, anything like that. I think it's just simply the way your body and your mind processes fear. That's a really good point because I know, so I dealt with a catcher. I was coaching uh, high school ball and our catcher couldn't throw it back to the pitcher. And the coach, the head coach did, you know, I'm, I'm the pitching coach and the head coach kind of didn't get it. Most head coaches don't get that. Like they sit there and they yell at, throw it back, throw it back already. If you don't throw it back, I'm going to get someone who can do it. And it's natural to do that. That's a natural reaction, but it's, it's almost like telling someone with depression, hey, get over it. Um, you know, you have yeah. so much to look forward to. And I just think that that the idea of it not being about mental toughness, but it's almost like everything you've done regularly, you've done for your whole life, that you it's stuff you didn't ever think about. And now you're starting to think about every little movement and that kind of feeds on itself, right? Yeah. I mean, I, I try to tell people like, what if, you know, you spent your whole life learning how to write, you could write your name, forwards backwards up down however you want to write and then you wake up one day and you you can't even hold the pencil the pencil you literally it feels foreign to hold the pencil you're like do I hold it like you know like a like this do I hold it in this finger there like you don't even remember how to do that it just doesn't work much less you know get to the point where you can put the the piece of lead on the paper like it, you never even get to that point and that's kind of how it feels man you just wake up one day and you're all of a sudden it's just gone and and it's sometimes it's the most simple task of like throwing the ball over. I know Lester had to deal with throwing the ball over for me. It was throwing just, it was just throwing fastballs to the plate. I could throw the ball all over the infield, wherever I wanted. It was playing catch and the actual, just throwing a fastball at the catcher. And so it just hits people different catchers. It hits it throwing. Sometimes it's throwing a basis. Sometimes it's just lobbing it back to the pitcher. It's a weird thing, man. And again, I think it's just an overreaction to fear that causes a physical freeze. So who, how, what type of training helped you get over it? Like, what did you, what was the, the type of stuff that you went through? Yeah, so the training that helped me the most was I got in contact with a guy named Jason Kuhn. He's a, he works with a company called, or his company is called Stonewall Solution. He's an ex-Navy SEAL and uh, he actually played collegiate baseball at Middle Tennessee State. He got the yips his senior year high school, he probably, or senior year of college, he probably would have been like a mid round, you know, later round draft pick. Uh, but it, it got taken away from him because he got the yips and, um, he stopped playing baseball, was just kind of not doing anything with his life. 
people were telling him his whole life, like, or ever since then, like, yeah, you're just mentally weak, mentally weak, blah, blah, blah. And he's like, screw these guys. It's not mentally weak. What's the most mentally tough thing to go do? And he was watching, you know, a TV show and basically Buds comes up, these guys just getting after and they're saying it's the most mentally tough thing to do. He said, all right, I'm going to go be a Navy SEAL. And uh, so that was, that was his why and why he went to go to be a Navy SEAL. He went on to have a successful Navy SEAL career. And um, when he was done, he sat there and went, man, if I knew the stuff I know now as a SEAL, you know, out of the service, if I knew that when I was in college and had the yips, I probably would have been playing professional baseball. So how can I help people and help teams to learn some of this stuff? So that's how he started his thing. I got in contact with him and he, uh, he helped, he's helped me immensely. What was the biggest, the biggest breakthrough? Was it just a, a was it a kind of a buildup of things or was there something that clicked that all of a sudden you felt like you had it? Yeah. So I mean, it was a buildup of things, I think for sure. Uh, a couple of things stand out. One, the, the understanding that we have to take that fear out of the freeze and put it into the fight. So being extremely aggressive, if we're going to fail, we're going to fail aggressively, you know, and just slowly le- teaching my mind that, you know, that's the state of mind we have to be in to give our cha- ourselves even a chance to be successful. Uh, so that was one thing. Another thing was, you know, getting your why to be extremely powerful by using love, you know, an emotion to, uh, to really make that why mean something to you. Um, you know, he, he said, if there was a terrorist in the corner of the room and he had a, you know, a knife, you're not going to go fight the guy. But if he's trying to hurt your loved one, that's behind him, you're going to do whatever it takes to get through that guy and save your loved one. What changes that situation? Just the love. The love is the only thing that changes the power of your why to go ahead and attack that. You start incorporating that into your daily life or incorporate that into the baseball field and your why starts to become very powerful. All right, well, let's go over some pitch grips and any cues that you have for folks out there. Um, let me start with a fastball, why not? Yeah. Or you can start with whatever you want. You were, you're Tyler Matzik, I'm just pitching it. No, fastball, I mean, that's what I use. 80% of the time or something like that. So I literally just use a straight up four seam grip. Uh, my tendency is to kind of get wide on these. So I try and think about putting my fingers together and I usually end up being somewhere right around there. I want the, the horseshoe to be on the ring finger side, just cause I feel like it matches up better with my longer middle finger. Um, sometimes this leads to it like cutting a little bit, which I don't mind because it adds a little bit of deception to it. And coming from when I pitch from, I pitch all the way on the toe side, it's looking like it's driving in. And then you add a little bit of like the cut angle to it with a four seam, instead of hitting true four seam, sometimes it's just acts, it's just turned a little bit. It just kind of, I mean, it appears, it appears to be cutting when really it's actually running. So um, yeah, it's more of like a, a mind thing for the hitter. They, they think it's going to start cutting more than it is. It starts running and it's just a different thing for the hitter. Um, honestly, I just try and grab it and throw it right down the middle as hard as I can. Is that, is that, the time. That's what I'm trying. That's really what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to grip it, rip it and spin it and make the ball kind of get this lively, this jumping action to it. And um, yeah, when I do that, if, it feels really good. And obviously the hitters uh, struggle to hit it. And that's why I, I throw it, you know, 75, 80% of the time. So there is no intent at spotting it up. Generally it is here. It is hit it. Uh, there's yes and no, but I mean, when I say down the middle, I mean, okay, maybe not down the middle, but I'm using thirds. All right. And I'm, I'm trying to stay for so many years. I've, I threw a ton of baseballs that are balls in my life. I need to throw a ton of baseballs and strikes to kind of make it somewhat, you know, close. So I want to just fill that zone up and I, I go thirds and I want to stay, instead of trying to go black, I'm going to try and stay two to three inches on the plate. That's my, that's my black. And I'm just trying to pound that spot. Do you find, and this is a question I ask somebody, people say velo doesn't matter. Um, do you find that you can make more mistakes as you're with, with the, uh, the velo where it is? Uh, absolutely. 
Like, I, I mean, Velo, you don't have to have Velo to be successful, but I think that, like you said, like you can make more mistakes and get away with them. Um, so yeah, you're just 98 is harder to hit than 92, which is the way it is. But, uh, you know, a well-placed 92 is probably, probably harder to hit than a poorly placed 98, you know, but, um, you know, I, I think it gives you some kind of a, you know, some kind of a advantage to where you're, you're not, not having to be perfect. Do you, uh, let's go to a uh, slider. Yeah. So slider, I, I, when I use my slider, I use more of like a, it's almost like a curveball grip. So you can see the horseshoes like this. And I, I like to think of it, think of it as a curveball that I'm throwing as hard as I possibly can. That's what I want to do. Again, it, it gets that aggressive mindset for me where I'm not trying to feel for a curveball in there. I'm just trying to, to set this curveball up. The finger, this finger is almost just slightly off the baseball and pushing onto the middle finger. I don't like the lifted. I don't like the spike. The spike feels like the ball's coming out on me. So I just get this finger almost off the ball, but without, so I just put it right here. Maybe it touches, maybe it doesn't. It's right about there, right? And then I just, I'm trying to think top of the zone to the bottom of the zone as hard as I can. Sometimes it'll get there. Sometimes it'll be more of like a slider, but I want, I want more of a vertical action. And it just lines up better with the way I pitch. The fastball does more of this. So the breaking ball wants to do more of this. The pitches that go this way for me don't really match up with this. And it doesn't, the hitters just, they take it instantly. They see it start going sideways. It's a take all the way. What do you do? You call it a slider? You call it a breaking ball? Do you call it a curveball? Power curveball? Do you, do you care? Power curveball slider. You can call it whatever you want. It's the pitch again. I I am thinking curveball. I would call it probably like a vertical slider is really what it is because it's, it's I don't want that hump to pop out. I want it to be coming in straight and then just kind of just fall straight off. Now. <laughs> I was thinking a lot of a lot of vertical sliders. They're they're more gyro spinny. So you got the you know the the football or bullet type spin. But mm -hmm. what you're describing is is a little. It, you're you're trying to are you trying to get on in the front of the ball a little bit? I'm I'm trying to yeah. yeah. So the axis orientation is probably like right about. I mean you know like that's true bullet. It's probably like right about there, and it's it's spinning about that, and it's I'm getting all four seams to try and make it tumble this way and so it, it's a power curveball i guess it's really what you would call it gotcha are there things that you use to improve it do you use like edutronic cameras do you look at your analytics on these pitches what do you do or or is it just like a feel thing you know it when you throw it and and that's kind of you know that's kind of you uh it's a combination of both honestly like i the way i like to use all the technology that we have available to us now is my concept is I want the hitter to be the number one, right? What the hitter sees and what the hitter is feeling is the, the most important thing. So I'll get more feedback from asking a hitter after a live VP or a game sim game or whatever, and be like, Hey, what was it doing? What did you see? Was the fastball jumping? Was the breaking ball, you know, easy to see out of my hand? Was it soft? And they'll go like, well, this one was good. This one was bad. And then what I can do is I can go back to look at those numbers and say, okay, why was it good? Why was it bad? And I'll see that one of them, you know, had bullet spin and one of them had more of a curveball spin. Okay. Well, if you said you like the curveball spin better, or it was harder to see, I'm going to try and do more of that and repeat that, you know? So the number one thing for me is not, it, it's, it's, I want to know what the hitter's thinking. And then the number two is what the numbers are saying. And I want to repeat the numbers on what the hitter is saying. Um, and that's with the fastball in the, in the breaking balls as well. Do you have a, a, do you intentionally have a couple different breaking balls? Cause I know Savant will say curveball, slider and have the stats breaking out for, for both. Yeah. Um, for a while I was trying to use like a true curveball and then use the power curveball as well or slider. Um, and then it just kind of blended into, you know, why am I throwing this curveball? Because I was throwing, when I was first doing that in 2020, I was throwing multiple innings. So I was using the curveball. I, my changeup was god awful. It was terrible. So I was trying to like use a, a, a curveball almost as a changeup to get guys uh, off. So I'd yeah. flip one in there early in the count and just kind of keep them off with like a 70 mile an hour curveball, 79 mile an hour curveball. Um, 
And then once I got to, you know, go more one innings and later in the game, I didn't need to use it as much. I could go fastball slider and more just aggressive, get after guys and try and, you know, try and strike guys out and, uh, you know, use two pitches to do that. So it, it kind of got dumped and put on the, on the backside, the back burner, um, you know, might have to bring it back out, but uh, it's a very similar pitch to the, the power curveball slider I throw right now. Your entrance song, your walkout song is Metallica, right? Is it Atlas Rise? Believe it. Yeah. Atlas oh, Rise. Let's go. Yeah. Um, have you ever thought about changing it to an ACDC song? I have not. Because I, I was thinking. What are you thinking? I'm thinking. Oh, man. Uh, on players day how about this on players day if we have another players day i'll play that as my walkout song. i would i think that would be the most like i think the crowd would go crazy that'd be sick uh.